How do you set up a .NET project to ensure it's successful in the long run? In this video, I will show you six things that I always add to my .NET projects to improve the developer experience for myself and of course for my team. I'm going to start from a blank Visual Studio solution and I'm going to introduce the six things that I just mentioned one step at a time. And I'm going to start by introducing a new project. So let's click add new project and I'm going to create an ASP.NET Core Web API. Let's just call it Web API. I'm going to click next. I'm going to be using .NET version 9 for this demonstration. I won't be using authentication. I will configure it for HTTPS. I'm going to leave the container support unchecked for the time being and I also won't be using Aspire orchestration. Let's for example use controllers instead of minimal APIs and then let's create this web API. So Visual Studio is going to scaffold my .NET 9 application. If I open up the program file, this is what I can see inside. I have controller services, open API and a few middleware components configured. And the first thing that I want to set up is support for enforcing code style inside of my Visual Studio solution. So how can we do this? There are a few options. You can right click on your project and then click add and right at the bottom of this context menu there is an option to add a new editor config. When you create an editor config file inside of a .NET project it's going to apply to all of the files in that project. If you have a nested editor config in some of the subfolders then all of the files within that folder will follow the new editor config. Now you can also create an editor config on the solution level. So let's create a new editor config file. And this is the default one that Visual Studio is going to create. You can spend some time to check out everything that's inside. You can also customize it based on your requirements, but the default editor config file contains some same default values when it comes to code style rules inside of your solution. So let's assume that we are happy with this and we don't want to customize everything, then we can continue using this editor config. Now if you want to be using something that's pre-built, there is an option from the .NET runtime repository and you can find the editor config file right here. So if you don't want to use the default one that's scaffolded in Visual Studio, here's an editor config file that you can add in its place. So it also contains a bunch of customized configurations that sometimes also match what we already had by default, but you can go ahead and explore everything that's inside. So this is one of the options and I'm going to leave a link to this editor config file in the description of this video. So this is going to take care of the code style aspect. Now the next thing that I like to set up is my build configuration. And this has two aspects that you can control with a custom file. So let's go ahead and click add and then new item. I'm going to create a new XML file that's going to be called directory build props. And then I'm going to replace the contents of this file which are created by default with this XML structure. With the directory build props, you can configure some build options for your .NET projects. And this is going to apply to all of the projects that you have inside of this solution. The root element is called a project. And then inside of it, I have a property group where I can define some custom values. For example, I can configure the target framework for all of the projects in this solution. And let's say I want them all to target .NET 9. I can also enable implicit usings, nullable reference types, and then a couple of properties that are related to code quality. More on this later, but I also want to show you one more thing that this allows me to do. So I specify the target framework and implicit usings and nullable reference types in the directory build props file. However, I also have these values in the web API project file. So what I can do now is just delete all of this and then the directory build props file is going to apply these build properties when I build my project. So now if I temporarily comment out the code quality properties and I right click my project and then build, you will see that the build is succeeding. So the directory build props file is working as expected. Now there is one more type of file that you can introduce to simplify your build configuration. So again, I'm going to add a new item. It's going to be an XML file, and this time I will call it directory packages props. So let's create this, and I'm going to replace the default XML content with this one. Again, I'm specifying my project as the root element. I have a property group, and the next value is called manage package versions centrally. And this will allow me to implement centralized package management for my NuGet packages. So how does this actually work? If I go back to the web API, 
I have just one NuGet package. It's inside of this item group. And I have a package reference specifying what is the NuGet package that I want to install and also what is the version that I want to install. But with directory packages props, I can manage the NuGet package versions in a centralized place. So how do we actually do this? So I'm going to copy the package reference that I have in the web API project and paste it in the item group in the directory packages props file. Now, instead of having a package reference, I want to have a package version property. And then I can just specify that I want to include the Microsoft ASP.NET Core open API package with the version 9.0.0. And then how do I actually use this? Well, I go back to the web API and instead of specifying the version explicitly, I can just include a package reference and say which NuGet package I want to be using. And this allows me to manage my package versions centrally. And this is really helpful when you have multiple .NET projects that are all referencing the same NuGet package. And previously, you would be managing the package versions in each of your .NET projects. But with this approach, we centralize the version management and we are only referencing our NuGet packages where we want to use them. So now let me show you what happens when we install a new NuGet package. Let's say I search for resilience because I want to install the resilience libraries. Let's go ahead and add the Microsoft Extensions HTTP resilience library. And for example, I will also add Microsoft Extensions resilience. So after I click install, and remember that I was targeting my web API project, if I take a look at the project file, you can see that I only have a package reference. I don't have a version anymore, where previously this would specify the version. The NuGet package version is now specified in the directory packages props file. So you can see the new NuGet packages are available here. So now whenever I want to just reference a NuGet package, I go ahead and create a package reference and include the package name. So this takes care of my build configuration. I have a file that allows me to centralize my build properties and also centralize my NuGet packages. The next thing I want to introduce is support for code quality. And let me look for a NuGet package that contains some static code analyzers that you can add to your .NET projects. The one that I want to install is called Sonar Analyzer C Sharp. So let me go ahead and add the latest version. And if I take a look at the Web API project file, I have my package installed and the version specified in my directory packages props. But what if you want to include some NuGet package, like the Sonar Analyzer C Sharp package, into all of your projects inside of a solution? Let me add one more project. So I will say add new project and let's create a class library. And I'm just going to give it a dummy name of contracts. Let's go ahead and create it with .NET 9. And if I take a look, at the NuGet packages that I have installed, you can see I don't have any. So remember this for a moment. Now, if I go into my directory build props and I add another item group, this allows me to specify some properties that I want to apply to all of my projects. Now, I will exclude projects that end with DC proj, which is the Docker Compose startup project. And then what I can do is take the package reference for Sonar Analyzer C Sharp and pull it out of the Web API project, and I can move it into this item group here in the directory build props, and this is going to add a package reference for this NuGet package to all of the projects inside my solution. So if I take a look at the NuGet packages that I have installed for the Web API project, you will see that Sonar Analyzer C Sharp is installed with the latest version. Now, if I refresh the NuGet packages in the contracts project, you will see that Sonar Analyzer C Sharp is also installed, and it also has the latest version. So just a recap of how this works. The package reference is added from the directory build props, and the directory packages props controls the package version. So now I can uncomment these properties here pertaining to code quality, and this allows me to enforce my static code analysis rules that we have built in with .NET, plus the rules that are introduced with the Sonar Analyzer C Sharp package. And essentially, I want to treat any warning that pertains to code quality as an error. This is going to fail my build. So now if I try to build my solution, you will see that the build is going to fail. And then you're going to get the list of potential code quality issues. And then it's up to you how you're going to fix these. You can, for example, take a look at a specific error. Here it's saying that there is an async overload of the run method and I should use that instead. So I can go ahead and say await app 
run async, and this is going to solve one of the problems. Now, there are some problems that you may not think are relevant for your solution. For example, do I want to be calling configure await on all of my async calls? If I don't want to use this rule, I can go ahead and suppress it. So you can configure the severity for a specific rule. Let's say I set the severity to none. The error is going to disappear, but there's going to be a new comment or section to be more precise and is going to be added in the editor config file. Let's say I call this static code analysis rule customizations. And here you can configure the severity for any of the rules that you don't think are relevant for your solution. Now I'm going to spend a moment to fix the build errors that I currently have. And after you are done customizing the rules that you don't want to follow and fixing the ones that you do, your build should succeed. So if I go ahead and build my solution, you will see that the build is passing. So what is the next thing that I'd like to explore? Let's say we want to add support for containerization of our executable project. This is going to be the web API. So the simplest approach is adding a Docker file. You can go ahead and right click your project, click add, and then Docker support. And you can choose the operating system for the container. So it can be either Windows or Linux. Now, when it comes to the build type, you can create a Docker file or you can use the .NET SDK. This allows you to use the built-in support in .NET for creating a container. I won't be exploring this right now, but I'm going to leave some documentation links under the video. Now, let's go ahead and create our Docker file. And this is going to scaffold a default Docker file that you can use to build a Docker image and then run that as a container. This is going to set up a multi-stage build with Docker. And essentially, this is the image that we're going to be running. It's ASP.NET 9. However, we also have to reference the Microsoft SDK so that we can restore and build our .NET project before we can publish it with the .NET publish command and finally run this as a Docker container. I covered the basics of working with Docker that you can watch in a pop-up that's going to show up above. So if you want to learn more, go ahead and check out that video. Now let's say that we are happy with this and this is enough for us to enable containerization. What I can do next is build an image for the web API project based on this Docker file and then use Docker to run that image as a container. So now I have a simple way to run my containerized application. The next thing I want to introduce into my project is container orchestration support. Now this is going to allow me to run my .NET application as well as any external services that have options that I can run in a container. And there are two ways how you can approach this. The first option that also plays well with Docker files is using Docker Compose for container orchestration. You can go ahead and right click on your project and then add container orchestrator support. You will be prompted to choose which orchestrator you want to use. I will use Docker Compose and then let's scaffold the default Docker Compose project. This is going to add another project to my solution. It's called Docker Compose. And here I have my Docker Compose YAML file. Right now I have just one service defined inside. It's my web API and it's going to run based on the Docker file that we scaffolded in the previous step. But you can also use this to introduce any services that you want to use. For example, I can run a Postgres container with just a few lines of YAML code. Your other option, and this is a more recent thing that you can use, is .NET Aspire. And you can just as easily introduce it by right-clicking on your project and then adding .NET Aspire orchestrator support. So let's say I also want to use this approach. I'm going to scaffold the orchestrator and this is going to create two projects. There is a service defaults project that contains some sane default values. And my build is kind of messed up right now because I'm using centralized package management and these scaffolded projects do not. So I'm going to fix this behind the scenes. But essentially, this is going to configure telemetry, service discovery, and some of the other things that Dot and Aspire introduces. And it's also going to scaffold my project as an Aspire project. Now let me fix these errors. And after I clean up any issues, my Aspire project should compile. So here I can go ahead and introduce some Aspire packages. And if I want to have feature parity with the Docker Compose one, I can go ahead and add a .NET Aspire package, install Aspire hosting Postgres. So let's go ahead and add that. And now I can add a Postgres resource. I can say builder add Postgres. 
give it a name. So let's say demo database. I can save this in a variable. Let's call it Postgres. And then I can add a reference to the Web API project and introduce a reference to Postgres. I can also wait for the Postgres container to start before running the Web API project with the Aspire orchestrator. So this gives you two options to orchestrate your applications. You can either use .NET Aspire, which is a more modern approach, but still uses Docker under the hood, or you can use Docker Compose, which is well known, well supported, and there are a lot of useful resources about working with Docker Compose. So that covers container orchestration. Now the last thing I want to introduce is a simple continuous integration workflow. This is an example using GitHub Actions, which is going to run on every push to the main branch and I'm going to run this using the .NET version 9 SDK and the action is more or less straightforward. We are setting up the .NET SDK with the respective version then I'm restoring my .NET project, building it, testing it and publishing it. So this is going to give you some quick feedback if you encounter a build issue or you get an error from one of these static code analyzers then you're going to run tests on your project and you should definitely be writing tests from the start. And then I also have an optional publish step if you want to deploy this application somewhere like a cloud provider. So what should be your next step? Let's say you want to deploy your application to the cloud. Here's a video that covers how to do just that. We're going to deploy a .NET application to the Azure Container App Service and we're going to automate it with a CI CD pipeline. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about it and of course, until next time, stay awesome.